Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and this is Rightly Dividing Truth. And I'm just getting set up here this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I pray for our class today. I pray for all of those who will be watching. I pray for those who will be logging into the webinar and hearing the teaching on healing. Father, today I just thank you for a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles that are manifesting in people, even as I teach today and as we pray for people at the end of this class. Thank you, Father God, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your love. Thank you, Lord, so much. Thank you, Lord, so much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, as I said, this is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and this class we're teaching out of uh, uh, in my topic of rightly dividing truth, we're discovering truth about healing by looking at what the Word of God says. And if we discover what the Bible says, then in reality, we will discover what God thinks. We're going to look at many familiar scriptures, as I've been saying, and we're going to see what Holy Spirit points out to us in these scriptures. So today, let's get started with Exodus chapter 15. We'll read from verses 24 through 26. So if you're watching me on Facebook, thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you are watching on the YouTube channel, uh, we will be uh, shut down next week. Uh, we'll be refitting our entire broadcast system. We'll be operating under a, a different uh, a YouTube uh, link, but uh, it's okay because we'll continue to broadcast the gospel. And so thank you for being with us today and tomorrow and Monday morning for my wife's show and so on. So praise the Lord. Okay, we're talking about healing truths revealed. So here in Exodus 15 verses 24 through 26, it says, now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara, or Mora, as some people say. And the, the people complained against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And the tree here is symbolic of the cross. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. And there he made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Now, first of all, I want to say that how God dealt with the children of Israel and how he dealt with people in the Old Testament or the Old Covenant is not the way that he deals with people in the New Covenant of Grace. But here, God says that when the children of Israel came to Morah and they found the waters, they found out that the waters were bitter. And the word Mara here literally means bitter, which symbolizes that sometimes you can come to a place in your life where you think that things are just not working out as you plan, and you can kind of become bitter over those situations sometimes. It's like when you're believing God for a vision like we are. And I know many people who have believed God for great things, but because of, um, but because of, of, circumstances or because things didn't work out right, they became bitter, they became discouraged, and they gave up. Well, I, I want to tell you that just because there are some things in your life that doesn't work out, just because you're dealing with some things such as physical health problems, physical illnesses, is not a reason for you to become discouraged, nor a reason for you to get bitter toward God. Uh, but here, uh, they became bitter. Now, we can become bitter simply because we are thirsty for something like they were concerning natural water, and, and then find out that it just didn't work out, and we don't understand why these things don't work out for us, and so we become bitter. Well, this was a place that the Lord brought deliverance to and for the children of Israel. Now, I want to tell you today that God has a plan of deliverance for us. What I said about, we, and sometimes we just don't understand. It doesn't mean that things aren't understandable. It means that just sometimes there's things we don't understand. And so 
God is a place of deliverance for us, which requires obedience on the part of someone. So how many know it's important to be obedient to God? And we're obedient to God in we continue to believe the vision, even when it looks like things aren't going to work out. So when Moses was obedient and the waters uh, were made sweet, as the, what the Bible says. And this is when God reminded the children of Israel of how he sent a deliverer for them. Keep in mind, you know the story. Uh, there was 400 years of slavery, of bondage under Egyptian rule and the children of Israel. God sent an, a, 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 a redeemer. God sent a type of Christ. God sent a deliverer to the children of Israel and led them out of Egypt's bondage, even after all the confrontations Moses had with Pharaoh and so on. And so God reminded them here that, look, I have brought you out of, 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 of bondage. And he reminded them that he sent Moses and led them out of Egypt's bondage. And sometimes I just want to say how this relates to us. That sometimes there are problems in life that seems like bondage to us. If you're dealing with long-term uh, physical problems, then it may feel like you're in bondage. Sometimes there are money problems. Sometimes there are health problems. But these experiences can seem like a place that becomes a bitter experience for us. When you're dealing with long-term health problems, which we're talking about healing today, when you're dealing with long-term health problems, the reality is there are times that you can really become bitter because it goes on and on and on, and you're being taxed in your uh, uh, in your uh, your your emotions in your body. And so there's times you just want to say, look, forget it. This is the way it is. But that's not a place or a time for you to get discouraged and give up. That's a place for you to dig in deep and to continue to believe God day after day after day, no matter how long it takes, even though it shouldn't take long, still, no matter how long it takes. But for the children of Israel, God also established a covenant with Moses, despite this place of bitterness that was in them. And God says, for I am the Lord who heals you. Now, this was a healing covenant because God saw they needed a healing God. The reality is, as you might say, was there a record of anyone being sick? Uh, there is no record of that. Uh, was there a record of somebody that had a disability? Not that we know of, okay? But the reality is, is that God provided a healing covenant. So where did they need healing at at this point in time? They needed healing in their emotions, amen? Okay, so you study it out, and we're going to continue on this week after week, but you study it out. Here in, the, in Exodus 15, there was not an evidence of sickly people, but what there was evidence of is people who were bitter and needed healing in their emotions. So listen to this. Every bitter experience in life will have an impact on your physical man. Did you know that that uh, that uh, there's a, and also it will have an effect or an impact on your emotional uh, uh, state of being with stress and fear? So did you know that when you are stressed or you're worried or even uh, concerned about why is my healing not working? Why is healing not manifesting? When you get to that, you create an emotional stress that le releases chemicals into your physical body. And there, your physical body begins to get sick. People get stomach ulcers over worry. They get all kinds of things over worry. The reality is, is God did not create you to handle stress. God did not create your body to deal with sickness. Amen. And so God provides a healing covenant. Now you say, well, I have believed for healing and healing has not worked for me. Listen to me. The reality is, is God wants you healed. Now, the fact that God wants you healed, please understand, is enough for me. That might not be enough for you. That's why I came up with the saying, which we'll repeat a couple of times today, probably, but that I'm not the sick trying to get healed. I'm the healed because God said so. You have to make up your mind that Jesus took stripes upon his back and he ratified that at the cross so that it would be solidified or the word solidified means frozen, that, that it would be frozen or in other words, it can't be undone. And so the reality is, when you get stressed and you get sick in your emotions, you get sick in your body, you need a healing. You need a miracle. Sometimes those things happen because we get stressed. We worry and fear. I hear people all the time send me messages telling me, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about money. I'm worried about my relative. I'm worried about my 
church. I'm worried about this and that. And I, I get it. I get it. I completely get it. But the problem is, is Jesus said, do not worry in Matthew chapter six. There's a message there. And so I want you to understand that God does not want you sick in your body and God does not want you sick in your emotions. Yet the children of Israel came to a place of bitterness and they needed a healing. Isn't that amazing? They came to a place of bitterness, which we know happens in our emotions. And yes, we need to forgive and we need to let go. We need to release people. But the reality is, is in that state of bitterness, God provided a healing covenant. So God has provided a way out for you, even when you go in the opposite direction of God's provision. He has provided a savior whose name is Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Now let's look at Philippians chapter two, verses six through eight. Philippians chapter two. And please make notes. I'll probably go fast enough that you won't be able to turn in your Bible if you're listening to me. But what I can do is you can write these down and read them later. Philippians chapter two, verses six through eight. It says, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Of course, we're talking about Jesus here. Jesus being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. What a powerful portion of scripture. Now, I want you to think about this right now, if you would, that Jesus came in the form of God, being in the form of God, came in the form of man. He didn't think it was robbery to be equal with God. The Bible says that we have been made heirs of God and we've been made joint heirs or the word joint there is means equal. We've been made equal heirs with Jesus Christ. And Jesus didn't think it was robbery to be equal with God. And I want you to understand we, we are not God. But the Bible teaches us that we were created a little lower. The Bible says we were created in the book of Psalms a little lower than the angels. That word angels there is actually mistranslated. It's translated incorrectly. It is the Hebrew word Elohim, which is the Hebrew word for the Godhead. We were created a little lower than the Godhead. Some commentaries say we have been created a hair width difference from God. But the reality is Jesus didn't think it was robbery to be in that position. So everything that Jesus knew that the father had, he also knew that he that they belonged to him. Yet we come to a place where we think that we don't deserve the things of God, yet we were created uh, just, just like God uh, in his image, in his likeness. Now, when we think, when Jesus came to the earth, he offered himself as a substitutionary sacrifice for all mankind. Jesus was the one who became obedient on our behalf. And this was the, so that we could receive the benefit of his sacrifice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus came and he died on the cross. And by doing so, he made it so that we could be uh, equal with God, that we could, uh, we could be the same as God or on the same page with God. Think like God, act like God, have the mind of Christ and so on. So this is what I say to everyone. Once again, you are not the sick trying to get healed, but you are healed because God said so. Let me say that again, because I want you to think about this. You right now, you that are listening to me, you're watching me on the Facebook live stream or you're watching me on the YouTube channel. And and when we go to a different system uh, shortly, uh, you will be able to uh, see us uh, uh, very easily on our YouTube channel. But for now, I want to tell you that Whatever you're going through, whatever physical condition, whatever sickness you're going through right now, I want you to hear this. You are not the sick trying to get healed. This is your faith position. You're not the sick trying to get healed. You are healed even though your body says you're not, even though your emotions says you're not, even though your circumstances says you're not. You are healed because God said so. Let me ask you a question. If I was to tell you that you are sick, and that you are worthless and you're never going to make it. Would you believe me or would you believe God? 
God says you're healed and whole. God says you are valued. God says you're highly favored. God says that you uh, that He has a plan for you, a plan for wealth, for for prosperity, a plan for healing. God says all those things about you. So would you believe someone else's report or would you believe God's report? Well, you're going to tell me, Doctor Bill. I would believe God's report. So I'm asking you the question: Would you believe the report of your physical body or would you believe the report of God? Your physical body body may say to you right now that you're sick and you're diseased and you're not going to survive. But what does God say? God says you're healed, period. And you were healed uh, or, or have been healed over 2,000 years ago at the cross when Jesus took stripes upon his body, body and went to the cross for you. And so I want to tell you that I have learned to believe what God says in spite of the report of my body. Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the Lord? Or will you continue to believe the report that's in your body? Or even the report your doctor gives you. The doctor may say this, this, this is wrong. And you can say, okay, doc. And then you can go and say, look. Father, I thank you that that regardless of the report of the doctor, your report says I'm healed. And you can just continue to believe the Lord. Uh, the, and the same healing covenant that God made a long time ago is still good for us today. So it must be important to God for us to understand this healing covenant. Did you hear what I said? It must be important to God for us to hear this healing covenant, for us to understand this healing covenant. It must be important to God. Are you hearing me? It must be important to God. It must be important to God. It must be important to God. So here's my question. If it's important to God, my question is, is it important to you? If it's important to God, is it important to you? If God thinks it's important for you to understand healing, then is it important to you? Well, Jesus came in the form of a flesh and blood man, so he would experience everything mankind faced. Now, listen to me. Jesus did not come because uh, for Jesus' benefit, okay? There was no reason for Jesus to come other than humanity. Jesus was the Son of God. All royalty, all deity was upon him. There was nothing that would change when he came, but he had nothing to gain by coming, except he came to sacrifice himself for all humankind. Not for Christians, not for the church, but for all humankind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the reality is, is that when Jesus came, he came to experience, he came to touch humanity. And the truth is, is that Jesus humbled himself. And the Bible says he became obedient to the cross. Now, why did he become obedient to the cross? Well, here's the answer. He became obedient to the cross with you on his mind. He was thinking of you and me when he went to the cross. Let's look what Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says. Hebrews 12 verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Every natural father looks at his child and says, this is my pride and joy. You that are watching me today, even if you're dealing with a physical sickness, listen to me. You are saying, this is my pride and joy when you look at your child. Well, when Jesus hung on the cross for you, it was because you were his pride and joy. In other words, Jesus was thinking about you. Did you hear me today? Jesus was thinking about you when he hung there. He hung there so that you would receive the benefit of what he did. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay. Now, um, he took every sin, sickness, and disease with you on his mind. He bore that load. He carried that thing so that you could be free from it. So here's the question people often ask. If Jesus took it so I wouldn't have to have it, yet I've got sickness, why is that? Well, there is a devil. That's one thing I want to tell you. There is a devil. Now, I'm not a believer in the devil. Now, I believe that he exists, but I just don't believe in his power. I don't believe in his message. 
you know, there are are, are anti-radical racist groups out there that I believe they exist. I just don't believe in their message. Okay. Uh, there are terrorists out there. I believe they exist. I just don't believe in their message. Well, there is a devil out there. I believe he exists, but I don't believe in his message. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you listening to me today, you need to stop believing in the devil's message. So here I want you to understand that Jesus became your deliverer, just like God sent Moses to become a deliverer to the children of Israel. But the children of Israel complained because they did not like the rules God set in place for their deliverance. God asked them to hear his voice. I mean, don't you think that's not really extreme? God asked them to hear his voice. I'm asking you to hear my voice today. And more than that, I'm asking you to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit as I speak to you today. So God asked them to hear his voice. God asked them to do what was right in his sight. God asked them to pay attention to his commands. And God said that if the children of Israel would obey him, none of the diseases that came on the Egyptians would come on them. Yet sickness and disease did not come from God, but at that time, it, it, it did come out of disobedience or a lack of being obedient to God. So remember, once again, our God is a healing God. I want you to say that wherever you're at right now. If you're watching me right now, I want you to say that. My God is a healing God. Say it right now. My God is a healing God. Your God is a healing God, folks. Our God's a healing God. Now, under the old covenant, God dealt with mankind according to the law. I want you to get this. Today, God deals with this according to his grace. But under the law, God dealt with mankind, or in the Old Testament, God dealt with mankind according to the law. Yet obedience to God's voice is still very important, even though God deals with us according to his grace. And I'm a grace preacher. I love grace. Thank God for his grace. But the, the, the reality is, is, is it's still important for us today to be obedient to the voice of the Lord. So in Exodus 15, 26, it is referring to the diseases that are a part of the world system where man serves the will of Satan. Or, and you can say this sometimes, sometimes people serve the will of themselves. Well, God is telling us that there is a way for sickness and disease to have no effect on you. I want to say that again. God is saying here that there is a way for sickness and disease to have no effect on you. One of those ways is what you think about it. Do you think that you are healed? Do you believe that you are healed? Even when there's pain in your body, even when there's sickness in your body, do you believe you're healed by the stripes of Jesus? Or do you actually believe, I am sick? I believe I am sick. Is that what you believe? Is that what you've been saying? Or even when you're bent over with pain and you're, 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 you're crying out, oh, Father God, I thank you that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Your body doesn't say that it feels healed, but yet you're, what you believe in your heart says you believe you are healed. And so it's very important that we believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, we've been talking about who to blame for what you might be dealing with in your body right now. I want you to think about this. <clears throat> Who do you blame for what you're going through right now? I'm serious. Who do you blame? Are you saying that God did it? Are you saying the devil did it? Are you saying it doesn't matter? What are you saying? What are you saying? I want you to know that there is someone to blame. Well, we don't need to spend all of our time focusing on the one who is to blame. We want to focus on the healer. Amen. Let's look at Luke chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. You can write this down and look at it later. Luke chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. The Lord answered and said to him, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his, uh, lose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water? So ought this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, 
for 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And when he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame and all the multitude rejoiced for uh, all the glorious things that were done by him. While there are several things here that are happening in this passage, uh, what, what we're trying to see is who brought this affliction upon this woman. This woman being a daughter of Abraham. What does that mean? What's he talking about? Well, she had a covenant with God in the, in the New Testament prior to the cross because of what God made with Abraham back there. Abraham had a covenant with God. Now, I want you to think about this. Uh, first of all, Jesus went against religious tradition here by healing this woman on the Sabbath day. It was against the rules of the law, not to do any type of labor on the Sabbath day, not to heal anyone on the Sabbath day. And the, the, the leaders of the church there of the synagogue became very upset with Jesus. Well, understand that it was under the old covenant that it was not even permitted to heal folks on the Sabbath day. And we know that the devil always gives you an excuse for why you cannot be healed. God will always give you one reason why you can be healed, which is by his stripes you are healed. Not will be healed, but you are healed. Amen. And Jesus saw the sickness in this woman for what it really was. He said it was bondage. He said, Jesus said, remember Jesus? Jesus said, sickness is bondage. Jesus said, sickness is bondage. Amen? So we want to think about that. Jesus said, uh, sickness is bondage. Hallelujah. And so since Jesus said that, don't you think we should take it as, as important? Jesus said sickness is bondage. Jesus did not consider this woman to be blessed because of the sickness, so he called her bound. See, sickness is not a blessing. Uh, Jesus did not see anything good about her condition. He simply came to set her free from this infirmity. Now, let me ask you this. If sickness is a good thing, if God wants you to suffer for his glory, if God wants you to go through some things, if you think you're called to a life of suffering, please hear me. Why are you praying for deliverance? Why are you praying for freedom? If you think your sickness is God doing, trying to work some work in you, if that's what you think, then why are you believing for healing? You should just stay in that if that's what you believe. But folks, that's not what we believe. We believe that healing is from God. We do not believe that sickness is from God. And so uh, Jesus came to set her free from this infirmity. Now, after years of dealing with this chronic illness, Jesus came and released her from that bondage. Jesus clearly says that Satan had bound her for 18 years. Not God. Satan had bound her with this infirmity, not God. Right there in the scriptures. So one more time, we see who the source of sickness is. Amen. It's very important that we understand the source of sickness. Well, I want you to understand that we're going to be studying a lot on Exodus 15, and we're going to be looking at how that the devil tries to get people to believe in sickness the devil tries to get people to believe in his power, but we're not interested in what the devil believes. We're not interested in what the devil thinks. We're not interested in what the devil tries to tell you. What we're interested in is what does God say? What is the word of the Lord? And so that's what Jesus did here. This woman was set free in spite of religious tradition, in spite of religious surroundings, in spite of the city or the place or the, the, the religious facility he was at. He believed in healing and he proclaimed healing and was set free. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, today, God knows. He, he, he knows what you're going through. And, and he is a healing God. He wants you to know that he is a healing God. Uh, he is not a God of sickness. Jesus is not a sickness God. His business is not sickness. His business is healing. If you look at the, the, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will see the majority, the majority of the ministry of Jesus was about healing. That's what he did. That was one of his main focuses, not only to teach truth, not only to bring truth, 
but was to bring healing to people. Amen. And God does not want you to suffer affliction. The, the suffering that Jesus said, when the Bible says that we identify in the sufferings of Jesus, it's talking about uh, that we can see what Jesus did, that he did for us and as us. That's not talking about believing that we're supposed to suffer, not at all. And so please understand that. The reality is, is that God wants you healed and God wants you whole. That's why he became Jehovah Rapha, uh, the God who heals there in Exodus 15, 26. That was the first healing, the first covenant ever established. And it was a healing covenant. Amen. When God declared himself, the God who is healer, he was revealing one, one of his unchangeable attributes of his character in you, in you, in you, hallelujah, and to you. For God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to take stripes upon his back, to solidify, to freeze every promise he made in his word so that you might be healed. That's the will of God. Are you hearing me today? That is the will of God. That is the will of God. God wants you healed. God wants you whole. If you're dealing with sickness today, I want you to understand that God wants you healed. That's his will. You're not the sick trying to get healed. You're the healed because God said so. So what I want to ask you to do is to believe. I'm just asking you to believe. I'm not asking you to perform any miracles. I'm asking you to believe. Now, you can lay hands on yourself. You can believe God for a miracle. Amen. But I'm asking you to believe, and I'm going to minister to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Lord, I bless you right now in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your healing power. Thank you, Lord. Someone right now has a stomach uh, problem uh, that's being healed. You know who you are. Holy Spirit knows who you are. In the name of Jesus, I command all that pressure, all that pain just to be released. In the name of Jesus, someone in your left rib is being healed right now. I command that pain and discomfort to leave your body in Jesus' name. I just feel impressed to speak over growths, over knots and lumps in your body. Growths maybe in the stomach, groin area. I command healing in Jesus' name. I command knots to dissolve in Jesus' name. I command a growths to dissolve in Jesus' name. I command healing upon you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Now check yourself right now. Someone has had a, a an extremely painful growth in your body, and check that right now. And as you're touching that, you're feeling it dissolve right there in your hand. It's going down right now, dissolving, completely dissolving, healed and whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for healing right now from these growths. Someone in the left ear is being healed right now. There's just pressure there. And uh, I, I don't know how much blockage, but I command that to open up and completely open up in the name of Jesus and, and hearing to be made totally perfect and totally whole in Jesus name. Someone on the left side of your neck, uh, your carotid arteries there, there are nerves there. I command healing in that area and that, that jaw joint right there in the name of Jesus. I speak to someone who has had a cancer in the jaw and in Jesus name, I command cancer to dissolve and disappear in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I speak to a woman today who has not been able to conceive a child. I speak healing to your reproductive organs in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that, uh, and, and, and listen to me, sister, uh, you and your husband are going to have a child. You and your husband are going to have a child. Your, or, your, your reproductive organs are healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Someone in your right lung, in the back of your, in your back, the right lung, there's been pain. And in the name of Jesus, I command that pain and everything to the root cause. I curse that and command healing upon you in the name of Jesus. Right now, you just felt the pain leave the right side of your back in the name of Jesus, that, that, that lung area in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Father. I speak to people today with muscle disorders and with joint disorders. In Jesus' name, I command all arthritis, all, all, all cartilage problems to be healed. In Jesus' name, all joint problems, muscular problems to be healed in the name of Jesus. Someone with a hernia. Uh, I, 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 I believe it's in the low part of your stomach. You have a hernia. I command that to be healed in the name of Jesus. But I also heard something else and I, I had to listen very carefully. I also heard that someone has a herniated disc in your back. I command that swelling to, to go down in Jesus name and for that disc to be a realigned. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for just pushing that disc right back into place. You may even hear a pop. We've had many people that have had their bones have popped as healing was meant manifesting. I just thank you, Father, right now, healing in the name of Jesus, healing in the name of Jesus, healing in the name of Jesus, healing in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Back problems healed right now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you for all of these words of knowledge and for the miracles I believe that are taking place. Someone right now on the left side of their back being healed in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you because you're a healing God. Uh, someone has pressure in the area of your heart. And in Jesus' name, I just command all pressure. I command proper blood flow. So I command arteries to open up and the valves to open and close properly in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just thank you that right now the pressure is leaving yeah, that heart area. So whoever you are, receive your healing. Grab it by faith. Receive your healing. Every one of you that heard these words of knowledge and those that will hear this video down the road, which will be posted in about an hour or so. So, Father, I thank you and I bless you. I honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a powerful morning in the word here in central USA. Uh, for you, it may be nighttime in another country. What a powerful word today and words of knowledge that came forth. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank you for watching this lesson today. And I hope you've learned something that will start you on a path for believing what God says about healing. Join me next time. Uh, it will be two weeks. I will be out of town next week. Join me next time for another episode of Rightly Dividing Truth, because knowing truth will set you free and keep you free. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.